if the warming is not anthropogenic, if it's natural, we have to ask, why do climate models overestimate the warming effects of greenhouse gases? The answer is that the models ignore negative feedbacks from clouds and also from water vapor, which would decrease the warming effects of carbon dioxide. In other words, we don't deny that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. We don't deny that carbon dioxide is increasing, but the models do not handle negative feedbacks properly. Well, what are the principal causes of climate variations on, on decadal time scale? Time scale that matters to us. We're not interested in millennial, million years, or anything like that right now. It's very likely, and the most probable explanation is that it's solar, solar activity, and specifically variations in the solar wind and solar magnetic activity that affect cosmic rays coming to the Earth, and these in turn affect cloudiness. That is a mode of thinking that's now gaining acceptance. We're not 100% sure yet, but it's likely to be the correct answer. I'll show you some evidence that supports this. The evidence comes from historic data, paleoclimatology, in stalagmites. Stalagmites from caves. And uh, the first one of these studied, published in Nature a few years ago, comes from a cave in Oman on the Arabian Peninsula. And these records in stalagmites show a remarkable correlation between the isotope of carbon, carbon-14, and the isotope of oxygen, oxygen-18, over a period of 3,000 years. A very close correlation. Now, carbon-14, as we know, is generated by cosmic rays in the upper atmosphere. And cosmic rays are modulated by solar activity. So in essence, carbon-14 is a proxy for solar activity. And oxygen-18 is a recognized proxy for temperature, used widely by paleoclimatologists. And here's the data. The upper graph shows carbon-14 and oxygen-18, oxygen-18 measured in the stalagmite, and you can actually count the layers in the stalagmite, so you know exactly where you are. It's like three rings. You can count the years. There's no, no question about the date. And look at the exact correspondence between the carbon-14 and the oxygen-18. The second graph below is the central section blown up. It's a 400-year period. And you can see in detail how the oxygen-18 and carbon-14 variations match each other. This work was published by a group in Germany, in Nature in 2001, and to me is very convincing. It indicates that this solar variability is the real cause of climate change, or principal cause of climate change, on a decadal time scale. I'd like to talk about one other topic, sea level. Why sea level? Well, because it's uppermost in the public mind. People are not really worried about temperature. Most people really don't love ice polar bears. Um, they're really grizzly bears, as you know, that uh, turn white when they moved to the Arctic some uh, many, many, many millennia ago. And uh, meeting up with the grizzly, grizzly bears aren't exactly friendly animals. Well, they're not cuddly. And besides, you know, I hate to tell you this, but polar bears like to eat little cuddly seal pups. And you remember that a long time ago, before Greenpeace discovered that global warming was a moneymaker, they were out there protecting seal pups in Canada. Well, polar bears are voracious feeders of little seal pups. Love them, delicious. <laughs> Look at the predictions of the sea level rise. The predictions of the IPCC, as I will show you in their four reports, have decreased dramatically. Hansen, and of course Al Gore, listening to him, predict values that are roughly 
at, say, 30 times the value of the IPCC. I've worked in this field and published in it. Our best value is 18 centimeters per century. 18 centimeters per century, which is the value of sea level rise that has existed for the last millennium, irrespective of temperature fluctuations. We don't see any acceleration of sea level rise in the 20th century in spite of the warming before 1940 and the cooling after 1940. Sea level keeps marching on more or less steadily at the same rate. But since sea level is rising naturally at 18 centimeters per century, saying that it will be 18 centimeters higher in 2100 means it won't increase because of global warming or anything else. There's nothing we can do about this. Sea level is rising because it has risen for a millennia. I'll show you the data. Well, in a minute. First, the results of the IPCC. You see here the four reports, 1990, 1995, 2001, and 2007. There was a little bit of a glitch. They had a draft which gave lower values than they, in the final report, they raised the values. They don't explain why, but they raised them slightly. Anyway, you see the, the dramatic decrease in the maximum value of sea level rise. Where on the right on top, you see a little dot that's marked H. That's Jim Hansen. He's an outlier. He's a contrarian. Clearly, this agrees with the IPCC. At the bottom there, under Hansen, there's a red S. That's me. But actually, the incremental sea level rise to 2100 will be, as I explained, will be zero. No change. Now, what does it all lead to? From a policy point of view, this means that carbon dioxide mitigation is not needed, is useless, can't have any effect on climate. It means that the schemes being developed in the Congress for cap and trade, the schemes being developed in, in the European Union for cap and trade, a pointless, simply political, and very, very expensive. Ethanol, ineffective and wasteful, heavily subsidized, and it's being paid for by all of us through the cost, increased cost of gasoline. In fact, it's worse than that. We're paying twice over. We're paying as taxpayers for the subsidies, and we're paying as consumers when we buy gasoline. Wind and solar, marginally useful, many subsidies, not, not likely to do very much. Good, carbon capture, probably one of the worst ideas. Carbon capture, that is carbon capturing the carbon emitted from power plants, consumes roughly half the output of the power plant. It means you have to build two power plants to get the same amount of electricity. 